So you're studying for the SAT Math Level 2 Subject Test. You've come to the right place. I'm Dan from WeWillTeachYouMath.com. Guys, when you're using these videos to study, make sure you pause the video at the beginning when the problem first comes on the screen and try it on your own. Most of your practice should be done this way, actively and independently. Then, if after you try the problem on your own, you still find it tricky, that's when you watch the video explanation. In fact, you can use any resources that you have available to you to try to figure it out so that the next time a similar problem comes your way, you'll be ready. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. 10, if f of x is equal to the square root of x squared, then f of x can also be expressed as what? This is a pretty tricky one. We have the square root of x squared, and they want to know how else this function could be expressed. So on first glance, there's a temptation here to say, well, it's the square root of x squared. So what's, what do you get when you take a number, square it, and then take its square root? Well, you get back what you put in, right? So this should equal x, right? The square, square rooting something and squaring something are inverse operations, so you get back what you put in. So there's a very good temptation right away to just pick x. But let's look at some of these other choices and make sure we're thinking through all the possible scenarios of how this could play out. Let's look at B. Could there be a situation where f of x, so what is f of x? f of x is square root of x squared. Could that equal the opposite of x? Or negative x? I think the answer there is no, because you're squaring something and then taking the square root of it. So in order for you to be taking the square root of it in the first place, it had better be positive, because we can't take the square root of negative numbers, otherwise we get imaginary or complex numbers as a result. So we have to assume that, well not assume, right? Any number that gets squared is going to become positive. And then we're going to take the square root of it and our outcome is going to be positive. So it would only be negative x. Maybe we need some concrete examples here, because I don't want to be unclear. Suppose x were to equal negative 7 right and you were to put that in there so f of negative 7 would be the square root of negative 7 squared negative 7 squared is positive 49 and the square root of 49 is positive 7 so the output of the function is 7 and the input is negative 7 so yeah actually in this case x equals negative 7 but f of x equals 7, which is negative negative 7, isn't it? So that would make b valid. But can we think of an example where b would not be valid? Suppose we had chosen positive 7. Take f of positive 7, and we'll get the square root of 7 squared, which is the square root of 49, which is 7. So in this case, yeah, so this is interesting. So when we use negative 7 as an example, we validated A. We found out that f of x equals negative x. But when we used positive 7 as an example, we found out that f of x equals positive x. So because A and B don't cover all the possibilities, we actually have to throw them both away because we want to be able to express f of x in a way that's always going to be true. So then c starts to become interesting. Could it be plus or minus x? But I think the problem with that is that it's changing what you put in here. If you put in negative 7, you get out 7, so it's switching the sign. But if you put in positive 7, it's not switching it. So putting plus or minus x means that there would be two solutions. And there really aren't two solutions. So I don't, li I don't really like C, although I, I see how it's interesting after looking at A and B. And D seems irrelevant, because what does absolute value have anything to do with square roots? But notice what's really happening here in our two examples. We put in negative 7, and we got out 7. We put in 7, and we got out 7. So what kind, of, what kind of an operation takes either a negative or a positive 
and automatically turns it into the positive version. Right? So it takes negative 7 or 7 and turns it into 7. That's exactly what the absolute value function does, isn't it? If it's a positive number, it just, it just pumps it through and you get the same thing out. If it's a negative number, it switches the sign and makes it positive. And that's exactly what this thing is doing. So it turns out that D is actually the best choice here. This problem troubles me a lot. I definitely struggle with this one uh, every time it comes up. It's, al it's also definitional. Square root of x squared is, def is defined as the absolute value of x. So, you know, some folks just memorize that, but it doesn't come up that often. So, definitely an interesting example. Uh, hopefully you can work it through. I think the worst thing that could happen as a result of this problem would be wasting a lot of time. So go with your best judgment and um, hopefully this explanation makes some sense or at least gets you into a position where you could eliminate A and B and then you're, you know, you're in a better spot to maybe guess between the remaining two choices. Hi, thanks for watching. If anything's still confusing or you need a little extra help, drop me an email, leave a comment, or give me a call. I answer every message. And if you want to check out more videos like this, visit wewillteachyoumath.com. See you in the next video.